So um, I once said to another programmer, why aren't you using Lua? And they said to me, it's because it's not object oriented. And this video is gonna show that that's just total nonsense. So um, what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna take the exact same thing we did in the last video. So if you haven't watched that, you, you might be a bit confused, uh, but we've made this sprite and everything. And this is just uh, totally the same as last time. I haven't changed anything, made a sprite. It's got an X and Y and it moves. Uh, it moves and we drew it and drawing in our case is just printing out where it is to the screen. So we're gonna we're gonna improve this syntax and I think it's gonna be a bit nicer and make it more object oriented style. And to do that, we are going to um, take our functions that we our native functions that we bound to Lua, the create sprite, move sprite, uh, and we're gonna stick them into their own. Uh, we're gonna stick them into their own table. So just before we go anywhere, let's just see that this still works. So I've made a, I've made a complete copy of the last tutorial. Uh, I've just called it object oriented access. So it just does exactly what we did in the last one. Um, so first thing to do is rather than just making these global values, um, this draw sprite, move sprite, create sprite, uh, I'm going to put these functions inside their own table. So to do that, I'm going to do Lua new table. Um, so that's all I need to do for that. So that's a table that I'm going to put these things into. Uh, and I'm going to do something that we haven't done before here. And it'll become apparent why in a minute, but there's a function called get top. Um, and that just gets the index of the thing that's currently on the top of the stack, which is the last thing you pushed, which is Lua new table. So the new table, I'm just going to actually um, just keep the index of that handy so I can use it again. Uh, so that's our sprite table index. So it's just the last thing I pushed on the stack. Um, and then I'm going to use this, uh, use this, uh, oh, I can create a global for the table. Uh, set global. So uh, and I'm going to call it sprite because that's the that's the class that we're trying to map. So all I've done there is just made made a table called sprite. It's a global and it's called sprite. Um, so on it on its own that doesn't really do anything. Um, but what I really want to do is rather than setting these functions to be global down here, I want to I want to put those as fields inside that table. So um, I could just change that for set field on this first one instead of set global and because the table's already on the stack. Um, but the problem is that will, I think that will pop, will that pop us off the stack? Um, oh no, sorry, the problem here is that um, by setting this global sprite, it's popped the table off the stack. Um, so we, we've said set global sprite and the, that function pops this table off, but we need the table on the stack to do this next part. So um, I will just, after I've made the table, I'm going to do something called push value. Again, we haven't used this before, but all this does is take something that's on the stack in a certain place and pushes it back on the stack. So in our case, it's our sprite table. So we've got, we've got our table on the stack. We've taken the index to it. We've pushed it onto the stack again, so it's on the stack twice. And then we've set a global. But when we set this global, it popped this one off the stack, but it still left our, our sprite table there ready to be used. So now this is what we want because we've got we've got our global sprite table. The sprite is still on the stack. Uh, and now we can change these set, uh, set globals down here to actually, uh, we can change those to set field. Um, set field and it's minus, one is the thing I'm pushing on, and then minus two is the table that we left on the stack. So at minus two. So we just we're just moving create sprite into its own table called sprite. Uh, we can do the same thing on the others. Same thing on move sprite, because remember this pops the uh, this just pops the thing uh, the value off the stack. So that's going to be popped, and then it'll leave the table. And next one is popped, and we leave the table. So that should, if I've not done anything wrong, that should still compile there. Um, and all we've done is we've moved these functions into this um, 
into this sprite table. Move create, move and draw. Let's just see what happens now. So we've attempt now we've we've run it. We've attempted to call nil uh, value global create sprite. So the problem we've got now is we've moved create sprite out of a global and into a table called sprite. So it doesn't work anymore. So the syntax now for this is we get our sprite table, which is a, a global, and we call create sprite on it. So you can already see that's that's duplicating words in here. So yeah, we've got past the create sprite and, and now move sprite has failed. Um, so we, actually, let's just see if we can keep going and and fix these. So it should be now sprite move sprite, sprite draw sprite, sprite move sprite, sprite draw sprite, sprite create sprite, sprite move sprite, sprite draw sprite. Um, so yeah, so we're just accessing it via a table instead of via a global. It's so via a global table instead of via a normal global. Uh, and that still works. So you might be thinking, what the hell did you do that for? That's just rubbish. It's made it worse. Well, for now, it has made it slightly worse. Um, but one of the things we can do is we can get rid of the duplicate words to start with now. So we don't need the word sprite twice in all this. Sprite dot move sprite. We already know we're moving a sprite. So um, let's change create to new. I like to call the thing new. Uh, if it's like a constructor, like a default constructor. Um, move sprite. We don't need the word sprite anymore. We can just say move and draw sprite, we don't need the word sprite anymore, we can just say draw. So already I think this might be slightly better, so to make a new sprite we do sprite.new, to move one we do move sprite, sprite.move sorry, sprite.draw, sprite.move, and so on. Sprite.move, so Let's see if that works. So yeah, we've just we've just renamed the functions really. We haven't done anything special here, but already this is slightly better. Um, but it's still there's still a bit more going on. So that still works like before. So it's actually tidier in terms of Lua as well because um, that's probably better than before because we're not pushing on loads of globals. Because remember this is a tiny program, but in in a really large program. Um, if all these globals start to conflict and the names start to conflict, that might be a bit of a problem. I've now changed out three globals for one, just called Sprite. So I've reduced the number of, of actual globals and I've reduced the number of name conflicts, which might become a problem later on. So you just have to make sure there's no one else making something called Sprite in your um, in your program and, that, and then you're good to go. Uh, but still, we're still not really properly object oriented because We've got, um, we're saying sprite.move and then we're passing in the sprite. So we can see it's kind of just really a C style function like the ones we've got in Lua. So it would be nice to um, clean that up a bit. What we really want to do, this is what we really want, is rather than sprite.move, we really just want to call uh, that on the actual, not the uppercase sprite, <laughs> it's the lowercase sprite now. We actually really just want to call that. Um, but of course, our move function accepts the sprite as the first parameter, so we can't really do that. But luckily, Lua does have some syntactic sugar for this, um, which is this. And all that syntax does is it say, on the object sprite, call the move function and pass sprite as the first parameter. So it would still put the sprite in there. So it, it's just syntactic sugar. It's not anything amazing. So really, that's that's the syntax we want. We've said sprite.new. That's like our constructor. And for these ones, we want to say sprite move, and then just pass in the values that we want to move. So we've not we've not duplicated any syntax there or anything like that. So ideally, we want that to work. But if we try and run that, it's going to say. Attempt to index a sprite meta table value global sprite. So um, what's actually happened is um, it's gone and looked in in the in the meta table. We remember we've assigned a sprite meta table to this to this user data that we've created. So it's it's gone in there and it said, ah, oh, find me a thing called move. Uh, and then it's gone, ah, well nothing exists called move. So let's go look in the meta table. So it goes into the meta table and, and it says, okay, have you got anything called move? And it says, nope, I've not got anything called move. So let's go, what it does then, and this is something we haven't done before, 
is it says, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the uh, it's underscore underscore index um, meta method. So that's a special method that will get invoked when you're trying to access something on on uh, either a table or a user data that doesn't exist. So it's gone to the index meta method and it's gone, ah, there isn't an index meta method. So what do I do now? Nothing, there's nothing I can do. You haven't told me how to do this. So given that, what we really wanna do um, is we wanna put um, an index meta method on that can actually work out how to call this, this move function. So let's do that. So here's our meta table that we made. Remember this meta table is assigned to the sprite that we make, the sprite user datum. It's already got our garbage collect on, but we want another method now. Um, we want an index meta method. So this is the method that gets called when you try and do something and that something isn't there. It's gonna go to the, to the index function. Um, but we need something to do. Like, so when it does go to index, um, what are we gonna do? Well, we could push on the C function for, for draw, possibly and then it would always go to the draw function. But then we've also got a move function. So we're not gonna be able to push on two. There's only one index meta method. So what we need to do there, well, what we can do is instead of pushing on a function here, we can actually push on our table that we made, our sprite table. So what will happen then is it'll, it'll go through and it'll eventually end up in the index meta method. And we can assign a table to that. And when we assign, we could assign the table sprite and that has all our functions already in it. It's got move and draw already there, which it should then be able to call. So the problem with this is this code's a bit backwards now is that I've made my sprite table here, but I'm making the metadata up there. So what I really need to do is um, push this, move this stuff after I've, I'm gonna make the meta table after I've made the sprite global table. Um, because then the, the sprite table is available at that point. So I make my sprite meta table, um, I put my garbage collect, and now I want my index one, and I really want that to be the sprite global. And you'll see now the reason why I saved this index um, before, because now I can just do push value again down here. Um, and there we go, so I've set the index meta method to our sprite table. So so that's gonna get, the sprite table will get invoked when it, it comes across something that it, it can't do. And our sprite table can, contains the draw and move method. So it will invoke the move method and basically it'll invoke our move function. Well, that's the theory anyway, but I mean, let's see if that works. So I'm gonna run this and it has actually worked already. So that's interesting. So you can see that I didn't even remap these other functions here, <laughs> like this sprite.draw sprite. I didn't even remap these other ones and these have actually already worked. So that's pretty good. So these basically are syntactic sugar. So, so this sprite move is syntactic sugar now for sprite move sprite five, seven. It just calls the same thing. I can interchange those two functions. So actually now I can I can go through and I can I can remap. Well, I can I can just restate these functions like this. So sprite to draw a sprite now just becomes sprite draw, which is that's really cool. That's kind of what I wanted. So we've seen the rest now, but I'll I'll just fix those up just to prove that this works. Uh, and then sprite two does the same thing. Sprite two move and then sprite to draw. So because of that little bit of syntactic sugar, we've now basically reorganized our code so that A, it's it's slightly less like liable to conflict with all the functions that we're gonna push on in Lua. And we've made it almost look exactly like C++. It's like the syntax is, is very, very similar to what we'd be doing in native code. So let's have a look. So there you go. So it works exactly the same as before, except now I've got much, much nicer syntax going on. So that is really cool. And for anyone who says, oh, Lou's not object-oriented, it's like, well, yeah, out of the box, it's not technically object-oriented. 
But the cool thing about Lua is it doesn't do very much, but it allows you to do a lot. Um, like, and if you don't need object generated access, then you don't need to do any of this stuff. So, so it doesn't give you things you don't want, which is one of the problems you'll come across in lots of libraries and stuff that you find online is you're like, oh, this library is brilliant, but it does about 50 things and I don't know how to get it to stop doing them because I don't need them. I don't want it to do this and this and that, but this one little thing it did was really cool. Um, so that that's that's really good. I mean, and if we can just go through that this again, and we'll kind of try and work out what's what's going on here. So we make a sprite. Let's put these in comments just to show that this isn't really the code. We make a sprite, and and sprite is a user datum. Let's use a datum. It's a singular. Um, and when we access that sprite has sprite has uh, so it has a meta table it has a meta table called uh, what did we call our sprite meta table called sprite meta table so sprite has a meta table called sprite meta table so when we access that um, we call this draw remember this is syntactic sugar so we call move on this sprite and it says, oh, I don't have a move function, so don't don't have move. I don't have move. So look in. Uh, so it's going to go use the index meta method. So the index meta method gets called when the index you're accessing doesn't exist. And then it goes, OK, well, I've got an index meta method and uh, index meta method uh, index meta method is a table which is sprite so so it looks up sprite and sprites just a table so and then it says ah sprite has a table sprite has a sorry sprite has a field called draw uh, sorry I'm gonna do move move so let's invoke that and that field is move is a C function, remember? A C function that we mapped to native code. And then, so we invoke that and pass the original sprite. So we're passing the original sprite this. Uh, pass the user datum uh, as, as the first parameter. So that it then invokes that function and we get, and that's why we didn't have to change the native functions because we're calling draw, but sprites be, still being sent. And you can see, so if, if you look at that, you can see why these, this is like syntactic sugar at this point, because, you know, we called the user data and invoked the meta table, had the index, but eventually it just found the table sprite and then said, okay, just call the table sprite and call move on it. And because of this um, colon operator, it always pushes on the original thing as the first parameter. So that's why these things are syntactic sugar. Because when I first started Lua, I, uh, uh, I just heard this quoted like, oh, this is syntactic sugar for this. But if you actually go through it, you can see why it's syntactic sugar. Um, because Lua isn't doing anything like really fancy, remember? You, we're doing a lot of things with, with a very small API. So you can see how this is kind of like, We've put together user datum. We've put together the sprite. Uh, sorry, a meta table. We've used one of these new meta methods, this index meta method, and and we're looking at values on tables again. So we've used a very small number of things to turn this code into object-oriented code, which is which is really cool. And remember, in C++, this this would look almost the same thing. This would be um, this would be something like this uh, sprite equals new sprite and then I'd say sprite uh, move five seven so when you look at it like that I mean like these first two lines of code are like they're, they're almost identical so for anyone who says it's not object oriented the answer is no it's not but yes it is and as you can see I, and, and I think this syntax is definitely 
clearer and easier to understand if you were giving this to someone for your game engine or whatever and say look here's the here's the syntax you need to use to draw and move sprites they'd be like oh, i'm cool with that i i understand that sprite move moves a sprite by five and seven they wouldn't have any problem with that so i think that is pretty awesome and it didn't take much work to do that i only had to like move a few methods about here i didn't change any of the actual native code that i was calling i didn't change the the class here um, and i got a much much better syntax so um, I'm not sure what we'll do next time, but um, we'll kind of like use this as our template for how we're mapping native objects now. So uh, catch you next time.